I ran the London Marathon and the New York City Marathon this year, and today I'm gonna to share the nine surprisingly great running purchases that I made this year. And honestly, I don't think I could live without them. Thank you, Ketone IQ, for sponsoring this video. One is a slant and wobble board. I actually just got these really cheap ones off Amazon. The slant board I love just leaning up against it and stretching my calves, that's been very valuable. I have it right next to my desk, so it's easy to use. I can just stand there and put my desk in standing mode and just stretch each calf one by one. And the wobble board I actually bought when I broke my foot, it was just to help re-strengthen my ankle. I like doing one foot on the wobble board and then maybe hovering the other foot or just trying to put some more weight on my foot that's on the wobble board. And that helps strengthen the muscles around my ankle and build resilience in the area because that can be a weak point for me, especially as a heavy guy who's running a lot. I'm putting a lot of pressure and weight through my ankle and all the muscles and tendons down there. So anything that I can do to lengthen and strengthen those areas, I love, and that's where the slant board and the wobble board have been extremely helpful. Number two is special socks. So one, I love compression socks and toe socks, just depends on the occasion. Toe socks I found to be really good for minimizing any kind of blisters in my feet, especially when I buy brand new shoes. I have wide feet, if they're too narrow or too small, I can get a lot more blisters. And when I wear toe socks, I get less blisters. So that's been valuable there. But then the other side of it is compression socks. I prefer to wear those when I'm doing longer runs or even races. I started wearing those after I'd broken my foot to help increase blood flow back up into the rest of my body. And I've just found that if I feel reassured, I like it. I can't say there's any extreme value, but I've just noticed if it just feels better, my feet don't swell up as much in my shoes when I'm doing these longer distance runs. I wish there was like toe compression socks because that would be like the perfect thing. If anyone finds those, let me know. And if you don't wear the right socks, your feet can get way too sweaty, so they're not absorbing water properly. Blood flow is not that good, and you can get blisters. So making sure that you find socks that work for you is really critical, and these are the two types of socks that I prefer to switch between. Three, Vaseline. I think this is one thing that is easily overlooked. I use it a lot, and I don't think people realize how important Vaseline is. Like, I cannot do any run more than one hour if I don't have Vaseline. I have done it, and it hurts. I'll have chafing, so it just gets like really red. Sometimes I can get like bleeding from chafing. I use it between my legs, behind my armpits kind of, because my arms are rubbing against my lats and my thighs are rubbing against up against each other. If I'm wearing certain things that might potentially cause friction, like my friend, she ran at the New York City Marathon with a vest on, and it did not go well for her because now she got a whole bunch of cuts on her back from the vest. So that's where I would have personally put Vaseline if I was wearing that vest. I haven't worn vests, so I don't know the experience of where I might get chafing, but you learn over time as you do these longer runs, and especially the ones where you're sweating more, there's more moisture, more friction, you're more likely to get some kind of skin irritation. So I found Vaseline is critical for certain areas for me when I'm doing longer than 60 minute runs, and especially when it's hot and humid outside. Like it's such a cheap purchase, just buy it. I used to buy the sticks, but those would run out really fast. Now I buy the jugs, and they can sometimes get all over my hands, so it's hard, hard to clean my hands. And then when I'm, I remember when I ran the New York City Marathon, my hands were all Vaseline-y trying to hold my phone, trying to grab gels. There's just Vaseline everywhere and it wasn't working that well. So in an ideal scenario, you wanna to try to apply a decent amount, like be generous, but not get it all over your hands because it's kind of hard to wash off even with soap. Number four is Ketone IQ. I've actually been taking the little jugs right before my long runs, and then I'll do the caffeinated ones during my long run just to get that extra boost of energy because I know when I'm running and I start to feel tired, I need the proper amount of nutrition. And I've just found taking these ketones is a little extra boost. It's helped me with my running workouts. And for every marathon, I actually did take two bottles of Ketone IQ for London and New York and drank one before and then one during. Which I do wanna thank Ketone IQ for sponsoring this video. If you do wanna purchase them, I do have a discount link down below. I'll even use these shots not when I'm running or whenever I feel tired in the afternoon, I'll take the non-caffeinated, no sugar ketone IQ. And then early in the morning, if I just want that extra, extra boost, not just for running, but productivity as well, I'll use the caffeinated version. The green apple is my favorite flavor. And knowing that professional teams like Team Visma, Olympic athletes, top nutritionists, doctors have vetted ketone IQ and use it, reassures me that this is a great product, so I personally continue using it. So if you wanna save 30% off your first subscription order and receive a free six pack of Ketone IQ, click the link in my description and go to ketoneiq.com backslash Shervin. Number five is PR lotion. This is the world's first and only lotion that helps you increase power output, combat fatigue, and decrease post-workout muscle soreness. I've been using this mainly for any kind of race, so I wore it at the London Marathon and the New York City Marathon. I'll put it on my calves, thighs, around my quads, and hamstrings. And sodium bicarbonate has been shown to potentially combat fatigue, decrease the potential for any kind of cramps. I like to put this on 30 minutes before the performance session, usually the race, 
and I apply it generously all over my legs, calves, quads, muscles, and hamstrings. And I've just noticed that it helps me go longer, farther, faster, and potentially minimize any kind of cramping during my race. So I personally have just been using it and I really love it. It does leave a white residue all over your legs and potentially your clothes. So just be careful. If you're wearing all black, then you're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff everywhere. I know when I wear my compression socks, I will have the sodium bicarbonate kind of PR lotion stuff all over my socks and it just like makes it look like it's messy. But if it's gonna help me perform better, that's okay with me. Number six, running watches. So there are two really good running watches that I recently tested, the Coros Pace Pro and the Amazfit T-Rex 3. These are very budget friendly options. So I just found them to be accurate when using them in a city like New York City, Chicago, all these major places where you're gonna have trouble getting good GPS signal. They're not extremely expensive, like these $1,000, $800 watches out there. They're in the three to $400 range. And for that price to be able to get decent data on your runs, I think is extremely valuable. So if you're just getting into running, it's not worth spending all this stuff to get the best tool possible. If you have something, use that. But if you don't, starting with a budget-friendly watch that still provides a high level of performance and power, these two watches have been really good. Number seven, a naked band. It's not what it sounds like, but it's kind of like a, a mesh band that goes around your waist. And if you've watched some of my running videos, you see that I wear that, especially on the long runs. And I've actually worn it in all the races that I've done. It allows me to put two water bottles, I think half liter, 500 milliliter bottles in the back pouches behind my hips if I want to. I didn't run with water in New York City, but I did in London. And then when I'm doing long runs, it's great to have that water on me. And then in the front, I can stack a whole bunch of gels, phone, action camera. There's just so much space. Like there's massive pockets. It's very stretchy. It's tight enough where things aren't gonna juggle around, but I can store everything that I need. I have all my gels, my salts, my nutrition my water, and all my content creation tools in that band. So if I don't have any pockets in my shorts, I typically wear shorts with liner in the inside, but even if I'm not, I can use this naked band and store everything I need for that run. And it's been amazing, especially for the long runs when I know I need to carry a lot of stuff and I won't be able to store it anywhere for easy access. Number eight, now we're getting the recovery category, the R8 Plus Deep Tissue Massage Tool. This thing wraps around your quads, your calves, it's kind of like a massage gun, but not really. I've just found this to apply much more pressure than a massage gun. Massage guns are nice, like they feel good and I like them, massage boots too. But for some reason, this just applies the most amount of pressure out of any recovery tool that I've used. And when my quads are sore, my hamstrings are sore and calves as well, the amount of pressure that it applies, it just feels more like a massage. It's the closest thing that I found that I'm gonna to get to a massage. So I've been liking using this device. I can sit at my desk and roll out my legs. I don't have to lay down like a foam roller. I can be seated and it's just relatively easy to use. Anecdotally, it feels good. I like it, so I'll keep using it. And number nine, Firefly. This is not a very common device I see a lot of people use, but it straps kind of around right below your knee and they use stimulation, nerve stimulation I think it is, to activate your perineal nerve, which is down the side of your leg, and it makes your foot twitch. And that creates blood flow, which they argue is just as good, if not better than massage boots, in terms of how much blood flow it's getting to your legs. I found it to be super easy to use on flights, so like traveling with it, it's much easier. It comes in this little bag, and you can just apply it anywhere. They also have these kind of like black covers that you can put over it because they use glue to stay on and the glue can kind of get weaker over time. They last about 35 hours and then you have to do have to buy a new one, but the black cover that goes around it helps maintain it on there and it, the tighter it's on there, the better the stimulation to your nerve and the more your foot will twitch and the more blood flow you get. So I found this to be really nice for travel, really nice after long runs. I know if I'm gonna be sitting at my desk working after a long run, that's not good for you. You wanna keep maintaining blood flow. So this has been something that's really easy to put on and use compared to massage boots that I actually really like. And looking at kind of their research and what they talked about in terms of the value that it provides, I found it to be useful and I like the feeling. It is kind of weird, but if it works, it helps increase blood flow and minimize my potential for getting injured. I'm gonna use it and take it on. So far, it's been pretty good. Let me know what which ones you really love because I wanna keep exploring and trying new things. My name is Shervin Shares. Follow me on all the social media, Strava, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever it is, at Shervin Shares. Subscribe, I'll have the links for all the products down below. Thank you again, Keto and IQ for sponsoring this video. Go click the link in the description to save 30% and if you're a first time customer, get a free six pack. We'll see you in the next one, peace.